of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And we're going to we're going to proceed just straight into the word of God just that, so that we may um, be edified. May he, the, the, the word of the Lord edify us this evening. May he educate us this evening. May he uh, challenge us this evening. May he uh, take us wherever he wants us to go. Like we said yesterday, we need to be men and women who follow the word of God wherever it leads us. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I want to start on something uh, today. Um, Probably, I don't think we can finish it, um, but we can continue on it another time. And uh, this is a subject I've called, How to Grow Up Spiritually. How to Grow Up Spiritually. Hallelujah. You and I need to grow. We need to grow. You know, um, recently, I think I met, uh, I, I think I met uh, one of uh, our members' kids uh, recently, and uh, I don't know how the conversation went, but somehow I, uh, I got to tell. You know, I think they were the parents were, were were telling me that he was celebrating, you know, either his seventh or eighth birthday, and then he asked me how old I was, and I told him, and I told him I was. I just said I'm in my fifty, in my fifties, and then I said, uh, do do you, do you want to become like me? And straight away this young man said, No, 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 no. I won't. I don't want to grow that old. I don't want to grow that old. <laughs> when he heard of the number fifty and above, he thought, Oh my God, that's not what I want. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, recently, um, in, the, in the past few months, um, one of my sons had this urge to to, to grow tall, and uh, not few months. I think he has started this maybe over a year ago. So he, he, he would get, he would always regularly get a tape measure and measure himself, measure his height just because he wanted to grow tall. He was so eager to grow tall. He wanted to grow tall. Whenever he saw his cousins who were tall, he would know, he would feel so bad. So he wanted to grow so tall and that he kept on measuring himself until uh, the tape measure itself got spoiled. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> he did a desire to grow. Hallelujah. A desire to grow. But it's unfortunate that when, when we come to some, some, some age, some, some years, we, we, we tend not to want to grow. <laughs> uh, we tend we fight the age. You see people like me trying to fight um, the gray hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I thank God I'm not fighting it. Let it, let it come. Because it, let it come. <laughs> let it come. So you'll find, you'll find many people trying to fight wrinkles. You know, however much you fight them, my friend. <laughs> Will grow old, they will come. Hallelujah. So we are talking about growing spiritually, growing spiritually. Unfortunately, we most of us grow physically, but uh, we do not grow spiritually. And God wants us to grow spiritually. Hallelujah. Amen. To grow is to increase. He wants us to increase. He wants us to multiply. You know, growing, a living thing, any living thing undergoes natural development by increasing size or changing physically. But that does not mean it, change in size and change of physical um, features does not connote growth, you know, because we have got many people who are old, but they're still, ha they're still behaving childishly so that they haven't grown up. And I think if we are to uh, examine our Christian lives, our spiritual lives, we'll find that we need to grow up in some areas. I don't know about you. And this evening, uh, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge myself that we that we that we may that we may grow up in, the, in 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 our spirits, spiritually grow up. Hallelujah. Grow up, grow up. Growing up is the, is the process of maturity or adulthood. You know, it, it, it talks about development. Growth talks about flourishing. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, you know, it, it, most often it was it, it was um, it re, growth growth referred to a reproduction of livestock like animals, cattle, sheep, you know, and also of, of plant life. It talks about uh, harvest, you know, that's growth. But in the New Testament, we want to talk about the increase of the word of God, the increase of the word of God, the increase of the word of God. In Acts chapter six verse seven, the Bible speaks of the word of God increasing. That, that, that means that the word of God was spreading, the message was spreading like a bushfire. Irrespective of um, the persecution of the church then, the word of God was spreading. It was growing like a bushfire. Mm. There, was, there was increase both uh, numerically uh, of the church and, uh, and, and spiritually as well. And today, 
we are talking about spiritual growth, spiritual prosperity. This is what we are talking about today. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul spoke more of this than anything else. He spoke more about spiritual growth, spiritual prosperity more than anything else. You know, although St. Paul would soar into strange heights of revelation, his interest was not just confined to cold uh, theological constructs. You know, wherever he med- whenever he meditated on the final consummation of, of all things, he was always conscious of, uh, uh, of, of, of the spiritual condition of the Christians of his day. That was his main, you know, pre, uh, m- m- main concern. And as a pastor, um, that's my main concern as well. My main concern is the spiritual growth, is the spiritual growth of individuals, the individuals that come uh, that are under my care. Hallelujah. Paul, as an apostle, he evinced a deep, earnest, and personal concern for those who were committed to his uh, under his charge and uh, those who uh, and the churches that he, which he had over, oversight he was committed to their spiritual growth very committed to their spiritual growth you know these these churches and these communities were always in his prayers and thoughts and he was always praying for their spiritual growth and i think that this evening we need to learn something from paul by considering what his judgment uh, 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 regarding uh, pros- Christian prosperity was and what were the marks of, of Christian growth, how he, how, how he viewed it, how did Paul view it. Hallelujah. The true prosperity of the church consists in the growth of spiritual graces among members. There's something called spiritual graces. And you and I need to be growing in those spiritual graces. You understand? Our parameters today as Christians, our yardsticks of growth are far contrary to God's uh, way of measuring growth. We are far, 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 far divergent. You know, we make so much uh, of, of numbers as though prosperity were a matter of arithmetic. You know, we judge, uh, we judge growth by numbers. You know, we are too obsessed with the statistics of churches. You know, statistics, statistics which can never uh, serve as a standard measure uh, with which to discover the precious gem of godliness. How do you measure godliness? How do you? We, we know how to measure. We count how many people came in the church. We count how many people were online these days. You know, which, that is good in and of itself. I'm not, you know, uh, discounting that. But that was not that was not Saint Paul's, you know, um, measure. That was that's not what he emphasized. St. Paul cared less of the numbers of the members of the Christianity uh, than the quality of the true Christians. His main concern was the quality, not the quantity. And that's what should, should, should be our main preoccupation today. You know, Today, that is what we measure as growth. The numbers. And that is only a fraction of what growth is. It is growth, yes. But it's just a fraction of what true growth is. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. What about the measurement of the growth or decrease in spiritual life? What if we, 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 we put our feet down and began to measure that? That's what God wants us to, 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 uh, to measure. The temperature of growth, the measure of growth in an individual. It's not about the wealth and the prosperity. St. Paul's idea of prosperity was not amassing or hoarding wealth, no. It was not a construction of impressive buildings or driving flashy cars or attaining a, a higher s- a social status, no. That's what, that, 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 that was not his measure. All the other things about which some of us you know, so greatly, are so greatly concerned, that's not the measure. Are they bad? No, I am not preaching against them. I love them. I, trust me, I love good cars. Some of you in, in, in Shiloh Tabernacle, you know my dream car. It's not a small car. I love big, I love flashy st- stuff. But that is not, you know, my measure of growth or measure of success. You understand? They should not be the measure of our success today. They should not be our main goal or the metrics for measuring growth. Just because you do not have them does not mean that you are not growing spiritually. Hallelujah. In most cases, we tend to beat ourselves and say, I don't have that, I don't have it. That means I'm not growing. No, no, no. 
physical stuff, the amassing of physical stuff does not tantamount to spiritual growth. I can assure you that there are those who have them, the spirit, the, the physical stuff, but they are very, but, but, but they, 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 they are very much spiritual infants. They are, spir they are infants spiritually. They have a lot. Hallelujah. Regardless of how long they have been in salvation, they have a lot, but they are still infants in, in the spirit. You see, all that Paul cared for was spiritual progress, spiritual growth, and that is what God is mainly concerned about. Growth in the divine graces. You as a child of God, you need to be growing in the, in the, in the graces of God. I'm talking about things like faith in Christ. Your faith in Christ has got to be increasing. Do you understand? You need to be believing Christ today more than you did yesterday. Your hope in the promises of God has got to be increasing. Hope. Today we have got many Christians, especially in this season, who have lost hope. If you lose your hope because of the things that are surrounding you, then you are still a baby in the Christian faith. You are still a baby. We do not, our hope is not predicated on the things that surround us. No. Our hope is in the word of God. Our hope is in God. Another, an another, another divine grace is love. Love for one another. Love for one another. <laughs> if you do not have love, I don't know how to describe you. You cannot say you cannot you cannot stand and say you're a Christian because Christianity is based on love, is founded on love. God is love. You have got to be increasing in love, love for other people, love for one another, and also increasing in the knowledge of God. You've got to be increasing the knowledge of God, my friend. This should make uh, the main subject of our prayers and supplications. Praying for their increase in us daily. Hallelujah. That comes from knowing, that comes from knowing that the present graces in which you operate right now are not enough. They're not enough. You can never have enough of faith in God. You can never have enough of love. You can never have enough of hope. You've got to be increasing in those graces. What am I trying to say? You and I have not arrived, my friend. You can never arrive. That's why the great apostle Paul says in, uh, in, uh, in Philippians chapter 3, and I think from verse 11, he says, not that I have obtained this. This is the great apostle. The man who wrote almost you know, half of the New Testament. He's saying he, he has not obtained. I have not achieved all together. I, I, I don't have it all together, he said. I have not made it yet. I have not arrived. I am not already there. I haven't attained that goal of being Christ-like. I am not already perfect. I'm not perfect yet. And because I know that, this is what I do. I keep on pressing on until I make it my own. I still need to grow. That's what he's saying. Although I am an apostle, I still need to grow. I still need to develop. I still need to change. That's why I am pressing on to attain that image of Christ. That Christ may be fully formed in me because Christ has made me his own, he says. Then he writes to us and says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. No, 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 no. no. But one thing I do, oh my God, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on to the, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's what he says. Then he makes a serious statement in verse 15. He says, let those of us who are mature <laughs> think in this way. A person who is mature in, 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 in Christianity, who is, who is growing in Christianity, will always know that there is always room for improvement. He has got to grow. There is always room for growth. There is always room for growth. What is he saying? What is Paul saying in all this? He is saying, yes, I have attained in life. Paul was an accomplished guy. He was an accomplished guy. 
you know contrary to these to 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 to, to most you know uh, theologies these days where people people uh, just go to serve the lord because they have nothing to do no paul had paul, paul was running away from something to do to serve the lord he he was he he, he was accomplished he had attained and he gives his credentials he was circumcised on the eighth day like other israelites <laughs> of the tribe of benjamin he says he was a hebrew of hebrews <laughs> As regarding the law, this man was steeped in the law. He was a Pharisee. Ah, yeah, yeah. As to zeal, talk about zeal. He was a persecutor of the church to the point of killing people, you know. That's how he was. And then he says, as to righteousness under the law, he was blameless. All these are very impressive credentials. But what does he, what does he do? In comparison to his journey of growth in Jesus, he counted them as loss. All of them, he put them in a in, in, in rubbish bin. All the very accolades that ordinary people would have, we would keep, would keep on waving around and wearing as badges of honor. What did he do? He got hold of them and tore them up and throw them, threw them into the trash. You understand? Along with everything else he had, you know, he used to take credit for. All for what? For the sake of Christ, that he may grow in Christ. Now, this is what is funny. All the things that Paul was running away from, <laughs> you know, uh, the things that, 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 that people counted as growth, you know, all these things that he was running away from these days, this is what most of us are running towards. <laughs> we are running towards what he counted as rubbish. You understand? These are the ones that we, we count as growth. In other words, we have gone to the trash can and picked up the rubbish that Paul had put, put in the rubbish. And that's what we are now treasuring more than Christ. No wonder we are so hooked up and addicted to the gospel of prosperity. Do you understand, child of God? Prosperity is not bad. Prosperity is not bad. But what about your spirit? What about your soul? If you prosper in all the other things and yet you, you, your soul is perishing, what does it profit you? The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? You know? To gain the whole world and yet lose his soul. John writes in his third epistle, he writes uh, in, in his third epistle, uh, verse 2, he's, he's writing to his friend uh, Gaius, and he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, in all things, and be in health. But then he adds something, just as what? As your soul prospers. Did you hear that? Your prosperity has got to be in line with the growth of your soul, with your spiritual growth. Today we have got so many people who are prosperous, but their souls are lean. Their souls are, 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 are destitute. Their souls are poor. Their souls are dwarfed. They are not growing. I am talking about spiritual growth towards maturation. There must be distinct qualities in you and I that point to the fact that you are growing spiritually. There must be. There must be. What shows in you that you are growing? There should be evidence that you are growing, that you are maturing. Like I said earlier, there must be an increase in love for all, for one another. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul talks about brotherly love. Brotherly love must be on the increase. If you are still this kind of person who holds grudges, this person who deletes people on your phones, this person who has got a, a black book of people who have hurt you, you know, you do not have love. You love. You are loving selectively. You are not growing. You haven't grown. Love, the Bible says, covers a multitude of all sins. The Bible talks of, of uh, uh, Paul talks of, 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 uh, of uh, Christians in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, he says that he loves them. He's, he, he's rejoicing because of them, because of their love for all the saints, for all Christians. For all Christians. Listen, you need to love all Christians. Everybody. Everybody. We, are, we love selectively because some people have hurt us, because some people are walking. You yourself, you are not an angel, my friend. I am not an angel. 
That's why I need to love all the saints, every person that God brings into my space. I need to love them. He's lo- I'm talking about loving the unlovables, you know. Jesus Christ said, if you love only those who love you back, <laughs> what, what difference is, is there between you and those who are out there? Because that's what they do. They love those who love them. What did he say? What did he teach? He taught, love your enemies. What does the world teach there? It's an eye for an eye. At the moment you begin loving your enemies, then you are growing. Hallelujah. Is, does somebody have a few enemies here? <laughs> if you have them, start loving them, my friend. Do you understand? There should be evidence that you are that the knowledge, your knowledge of God is growing. Your knowledge of God is growing. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10 it says, We need to walk in the manner worthy of the Lord. Is how is your walk? Is it worthy of the Lord? Are you fully pleasing him? Are you bearing fruit in every work, good work? Are you increasing in the knowledge of God, child of God? Sadly, that's not what is happening. Most of us are still babes, are still babies, <laughs> still requiring pamper changing. <laughs> and yet we have been in the Lord for a long time, still carrying childish mannerisms, childish idiosyncrasies. Hallelujah. Paul says, and he's writing to all of us as he writes, as he writes to the, Colo- and the, Col- uh, the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We normally call it the chapter of love. That's a chapter that any maturing Christian has got to have under his or her belt. Love. He says you may speak like angels, you may speak in tongues, you know, uh, but if you do not have love, you are nothing. That's what he says. If I don't have love, I'm what? I am nothing. And as he continues, as he, as he continues, as he concludes uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, that portion of which we are saying in verse 11, he says, When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But he says, when I became a man, what did I do? I put away all childish ways. <laughs> These days we have got men who behave like boys. We have got, you know, men in power. I'm talking about power, men in power who are behaving like babies. We have got men and women in the pulpit who are behaving like children. They speak like children. We have got Christians who are serving, you know, we like children. We think like children. We reason like children. We throw tantrums like children. Are you still throwing tantrums, my friend? Then you you, you need to grow. You need to grow. Somebody said something and you are off the hook. You are flying off off the handle. You need to grow. Do you understand? You need to grow. That is, to be Christian-like, to be Christ-like rather, is to grow and to begin to think like a man. You become a man. He says, when I become a man, that means he was a boy. He put away all the boyish things, the childish things. He gave them up. That's what Paul says. How many things do you have to give up this evening? That is why we need to grow, my friend. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 is what he says. Just give me the word of God tonight. He says, about this we have much to say. This is the writer of, uh, of the Hebrews. And he says, and it is hard to explain, since some of you have become dull of hearing. <laughs> and then he qualifies this. What does he mean? He says, for though by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again, again, the basic principles of the oracles of God. Some versions use the word elementary principles. You need to go back to the nursery of the principles of the oracles of God. And yet we have been in salvation, we have been in church. Isn't that a shame? That's a shame. He says you need milk. Because you are like that, you need milk. You are still a baby. You need milk, not solid food. There are some messages that we cannot preach to some people because they are still you, 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 you realize that they are still babies. So what do you do? You give them milk. 
It says, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. This is not me speaking these things. It's the word of God. Do you understand that? This is a serious matter. But then he says, but solid food is for the mature. The bones are for the mature. The meat is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice, constant practice, constant practice to distinguish good from evil. If you cannot distinguish good from evil, you need to grow. Then he says, therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity. Do you understand? Not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washing and laying on of hands and resurrection of the dead. As a matter of fact, let us move on. Those things, by now, we shouldn't be talking about these things. By now, we should be at another level. You understand, child of God? Where are you on this spectrum? Do you still need milk? Do you still need milk? Or by now you ought to be teaching others. He's saying you ought to be uh, instructing others. You ought to be helping others. We need to grow. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about John the Baptist. John the Baptist in Luke 1 8. He was a baby, like every other baby. And the Bible says, and the child grew. The child John grew. And he became strong in spirit. He grew and became strong in spirit. Child of God, you need to grow and become strong in your spirit. Because like we said yesterday, the battles that we face are not physical. They are spiritual. If you are not spiritually strong, if you are not spiritually mature, you cannot fight the spiritual battles. You cannot wage war in the spirit. Do you understand? We, by now we need to know that whatever is happening, in, in, in whatever physical thing is happening in our lives is spiritual. Everything that you see is spiritual. And for you to overcome it, you need to be strong in the spirit. You need to have grown in the spirit. You need to be growing in the spirit, equipping your spirit, feeding your spirit like we said yesterday on the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In Luke chapter 2 verse 40, the Bible says, And the child grew, Jesus Christ grew, and he became strong, and he became filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. You need to grow that you may become strong and be filled with wisdom. You understand that? I need to grow. I don't know about you. I need to grow. Like I know it that I am like, like Paul. I have not arrived. I need to grow. That's why he says in 2 Peter, Peter. Peter writing in his epistle, the second epistle, uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. This is what he says. He's asking you and me, this is what God wants you to do this evening. He says, for this very reason, for the very reason that you need to grow, make every effort. Who does that? You, you make every effort. You make every effort. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. Supplement your faith with what? With virtue. And virtue with the knowledge. <laughs> and knowledge with self-control. Oh my God. You know, if you cannot control yourself, you are still young. You understand that? If I, I, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep using an example of rage. If, let me tell you, if people keep keep making you annoyed, you are out of control. Nobody makes you annoyed. You choose to be annoyed. <laughs> it's a choice. How you react to other people's, you know, um, actions depends on your level of maturity. 
you have to be in self, you, you have to be self controlled controlling your urges controlling your appetites you cannot control your appetite to eat every time you are in the kitchen that is unhealthy it's unhealthy it's unhealthy you are eating too much and you end up you know putting on serious and especially in this season we need to be very careful some of us are going to come out of this lockdown you know <laughs> <laughs> you need to have self-control, my friend. Not everything that passes by you, you've got to eat it. Not everything edible <laughs> you should be eating. Drinking, you know, some people cannot control their, their, their sexual urges. <laughs> you, you, and you haven't grown in the spirit. You are still young. You understand? The self cannot be in charge. You have got to be charge, in charge of the self. You've got to be in charge of the body. You've got to be in charge. You've got to be who is in charge. If the body is in charge, the appetites are in charge, then you need to grow. You understand? And then it says self-control with steadfastness. Steadfastness. And steadfastness with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love. For it says if these qualities are yours, if you have those qualities, go back and read that portion of scripture. If those qualities are yours and they are increasing, you understand? It's not, it's, it's not enough to have them. They have to be increasing. They have to be increasing. Your godliness has got to be increasing. Your brotherly affection has got to be increasing. Your brotherly love has got to be increasing. Your steadfastness has got to be increasing. Your self-control has got to be increasing. It says if you have these qualities and they are increasing, they keep you from they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have them, you cannot be ineffective. If you have them and they are increasing, oh, you will be fruitful, and that's what God wants. Hallelujah! And that's the purpose of the fivefold ministry, my friend. That's why the purpose, that, That's why the fivefold ministry came. That's why he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 15, as we finish. This is the last scripture tonight. We'll continue next time to look at how we can grow maturely, spiritually. How we can grow spiritually. He says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, he says, And he gave, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds who are the pastors, the teachers to do what? To equip the saints for the good work of ministry. Number one, for building up the body of Christ. <laughs> Until when? Until we attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Why? To mature manhood. He wants us to become mature. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of God. Christ, so that we may no longer be children. That's what he says. Children who are tossed to and fro by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. You cannot be tossed and by this time you cannot be being tossed up and down by doctrine, by every person, by every person who comes up in town, by, by every preacher. Who, you cannot. You need to be mature. You need to be mature. You understand what I'm saying? You need to be growing. You need to be growing. You, I cannot be being tossed up to and fro by any way of, 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 of doctrine that is carried, carried, carried by, by cunning men. He says being, being carried by human cunning. These guys who carry, who peddle these, you know, uh, these doctrines, they are, they are crafty. They are crafty in their schemes. They are crafty in their schemes. But he says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into christ we are to do what to grow in how many ways every way you are to grow in every way growing into him who is the head into christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, 
when each wa- each part is working properly it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love just like your body every part of your body if it's not working properly you cannot grow you cannot grow do you understand child of god do you understand why we need to grow we need to grow we need to grow and next time we meet which will be next friday i hope we will start wednesday we'll be talking about how to grow maturely how to grow from the stage of a baby to become an adult in the spirit amen may it may i pray for you right now in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i hope you have taken away something this evening i hope you have taken away something to go and think of and ponder over thinking about the areas in which you need to grow now listen stop looking at other people right now stop looking at other people stop looking at the faults in other people this time get hold of that such light and turn it into you and say lord show me the areas where i need to grow show me the areas where i am stagnant show me the areas where i am a dwarf show me the areas where by this time i should have outgrown the areas which i should have outgrown by this time show me those areas that i may grow and let that become your prayer request and the ones that you already have ask for increase let them grow let them increase in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god father in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god we thank you for your goodness thank you for your grace thank you king of kings for your desire for us to grow to grow into you to be mature king of kings to put away childish things my father lord father in the name above every other name i pray for myself as i pray for your children right now that king of kings you will cause us to embark on a path to grow a path for spiritual growth just as king of kings our bodies are prospering our physical stuff are prospering our finances are prospering father may our souls king of kings also grow in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i am tired of, tar- of throwing tantrums i am tired of king of kings of being angry i am tired king of kings of hatred i am tired of all, all those things oh father lord that depict childhood father i want to be a man just like paul says he put away all childish things may we put away all the childish things in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god and we ask all this through the mighty name of jesus christ our lord and savior amen notice as we finish that nobody is going to take away those things except you Paul does not say and God took away the childish things no you have got to take them away identify them and make sure that they are out of your system hallelujah get them out of your system in the name above every ask him for the strength to do so hallelujah we give him the praise hey there thank you for watching We hope you've been blessed and we'll tune in next time we are online again. You can also watch our other videos on YouTube and on Facebook. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and also like us on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter at @shilo LDN For more information please visit our website at www.shilo.org.uk